So the problem we want to look at today is it's going to be a little bit different setup, but the same type of a deal. So I'm going to give you this original triangle that has a 2 to 3 aspect ratio. We're going to draw this comes straight up here. And this coming down here at a, a 1 to 6 aspect ratio there. And then an arc of a circle connecting the two of them. And I will tell you that, that is a 10 millimeter radius on that circle. We'll give it 84 millimeters across the bottom. I think that's all I'm going to give you. I want to find X here and Y there. So we need to find some angles here. First angle I'm going to find is this one here. I want you guys to tell me how do I find that angle? This one right down here. If I draw that right triangle in like that, that matches this slope here, what do I know about that triangle? It's a 3 to 2. Where does the 3 go? Three would be the vertical, right? Two would be horizontal. When we have the aspect ratios, we always have a vertical and a horizontal, so it has to be the two legs. So this angle here has got to be the same as this one that we're looking for here. So the question comes, how do we find that angle? Well, if I'm focusing on that angle, I know two sides. The three is which side of that triangle? The opposite. The two is the adjacent. What trig function deals with opposite and adjacent? Tangent. So I'm going to write up the definition of tangent. Tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. Then I'm going to fill in what I know. Do I know the angle? No, that's what I'm looking for. Do I know the opposite side? 3 and the adjacent? 2. Now remember, there's two possibilities when I'm doing these trig functions. One, either I'm looking for a side. If I'm looking for one of these sides over here, I put this over 1 and I cross multiply and divide to find that missing side. In this case, I'm looking for the angle. And when I'm looking for an angle, I use what? An inverse. So this is a tangent, so I'm going to use an inverse tangent. So that angle is the inverse tangent of 3 over 2, which is what? Fifty-six point three one. You are correct. So we've got 56.31 there and 56.31 degrees here. Which means I can find this angle up here. How am I going to find that angle? Um, I had to tell you that it was the same. I guess I, I should have pointed that out. But yeah, it's the same. Now, the equilateral, those would be 60. But is isosceles, this side and this side have to be the same. I had to tell you that, but they're the same. So 
So now to find this angle up top, what do we do? Yeah, 180 minus 56.31 times 2. 67.38 we get up there. Any questions so far? Okay, then. We know there's a right angle here and a right angle here, don't we? Radii of that circle going to tangents. This technically would be horizontal here for the radius, like that. Any other angles we know? Well, we know this angle right here. How do I know that angle? Yeah, if that's a vertical and horizontal there, that's a right angle. This has to be the complement. 90 minus 56.31 is 33.69 degrees. One other angle we can find here. That's going to be this angle right here. How can I find that angle? That would be the same as this angle right here. What do I know about the sides of that triangle? Well, I have that 6 to 1 or 1 to 6 aspect ratio, don't I? So I can put a 1 out here and a 2 out here. Oops. Good question. That shouldn't be a 2. What should go up there? 6. Very good. So this is also the legs of a triangle, so it's tangent. So I fill in what I know. I'm looking for the angle. Which one's the opposite side? That's my angle. Which one's opposite? One. Which one's the adjacent side? Six. So once again, we're going to do an inverse tangent. We get 9.46 degrees. So that is 9.46 degrees. Any questions so far? Okay. If that is 9.46 degrees right there, I'm going to cut this like this down through here. What do I know about that angle? Half is 67.38, which is going to make it 33.69 degrees, correct? What do we know about that angle? Ninety minus the thirty three point six nine minus the nine point four six. So forty six point eight five degrees there. Now what? Half 
Have a bunch of angles. Don't have much for distances yet. I can get this angle here. Maybe, maybe not. Which one? Well, these two? That one? Yeah. Well, this doesn't come. If this came back and touched here, we could, but it doesn't. No. Let's look at this triangle right here. It looks like we don't know anything about it, but I do know that angle. Can you tell me what that angle has to be? Well, we do know this side is 10 millimeters, right? Hypotenuse. So that's the radius of the circle. Let me show you. It has to do with this whole section right here. If that piece up there were flat, and of course this were at a right angle, what angle would this here form with the horizontal? That would be a 90 degree angle. But it's not flat up here. It runs at a slope. So if it runs at a slope, what can I say about this angle here and this angle here? They're the same. So this angle was the 9.46 degrees, right? So this angle right here has to be 9.46. So this angle up here, right there, let me enlarge that a bit if I can. So this was 10 millimeters. This angle here is 9.46 degrees. Making this one 90.54 degrees, or not 90, 80.54 degrees. So we have the angles there, and one of the sides, which means we can find the other side. Sides. So let's find this side here. How would I find this side here? Well, that's an opposite side, right? I know the hypotenuse, and I have opposite, so that's going to be a sine. Sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 80.54 equals that opposite side. i got to move this because I don't have room here. equals that opposite side over my hypotenuse of 10. So I put this over 1 and I cross multiply and divide. Sine of 80.54 times 10 divided by 1. 9.864 here. Millimeters. On bottom, I'm going to do the same thing, only that's going to be cosine. Cosine of an angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to put that in cosine of 80.54. Is that adjacent side over the hypotenuse of 10? Cross multiply and divide. It'll be cosine of 80.54 times 10 divided by 1. Oops, let's try that again.
1.644 millimeters. So what that tells me is from here to here, 9.864. More importantly, here to here is 1.644. Well, how does that help me? This here? Well, this, oh, sorry, you're right. I got that in the wrong spot. 1.644 is over here. You are correct. This here should be 10 minus that. This should be 8.356, correct? So why is that such a big help? Well, now I can draw in this triangle here. And I'm going to actually draw it out and move it that triangle I now know if I can get out of there come on there we go I know that this angle is the 9.46. I now know this length. How do I know that length? Because if this is symmetrical, half of the 84 is 42. So it's 42 minus the 8.356. Which is going to give me 33.644. Millimeters. Make sense? <clears throat> These angles are the same. That's got to cut that in half. So 33.644 millimeters. There. I can now find X. From this angle, what I have there is the 33.644 is the adjacent, and X is the hypotenuse. So that's going to be a cosine. I fill in what I know. Now this time, I have the angle, and I'm looking for a side. So again, I put it over 1, and I'm going to cross, multiply, and divide. So 1 times 33.644 divided by the cosine of 9.46. Gives me 34.11 degree, 34.108 millimeters. That's X. Not so bad? So 34.108. While I'm working with this triangle, I need to find this side over here now. So I'm going to use a, co a sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'll plug in the sine of 9.46 is that opposite side over the hypotenuse of 34.108. I could have done a tangent and done the opposite side over the 33.604. Either one of those answers is rounded. Probably the 33.604 would have been better to use because it's a step earlier in the calculation, so one less level of rounding, but it still works. So sine 9.46 times 34.108.
5.606 is that length. The reason that that is important to us is if I look up here, I have the 9.64. I now have 5.606 here. If I just knew the overall height of this thing, I could subtract to get y. And I can easily find the overall height of this thing from this triangle here. Any questions so far? Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a worksheet to work on. Um, one of the problems on the worksheet is this exact problem. But I want to see if you can just go through, put your notes aside, um, keep them to refer back to, but I want you to try to do it without your notes, see if you can replicate it. You have your notes to look back on if you get totally stuck. But, again, if you try to do it without looking at your notes. So I'll pass out that worksheet, and the way it looks... We've got a worksheet today. It'll be another worksheet tomorrow and Wednesday. It's looking like Thursday probably is going to be quiz for us. And then we'll go into compound angles after that.